This former high priest of Satan explains why he switched powers. The power he now operates in terrifies the devil. Next on this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth, your investigative reporter here with Michael Champagne. Now, what happens when a young man raised in a Baptist church all of a sudden gets exposed to mythology, or today uh, the, the modern counterpart uh, might be some books about wizard, Harry Potter books, which are so popular today. Well, you got turned on, Michael Champagne, on uh, mythology. Why did this interest you so much? Um, well, it started out as like a facts, a fact-finding quest. I wanted to know what all other religions believed, because the, obviously the one that I was at wasn't working. I mean, they get, had all the right words, but none of the power. Did you ever see miracles? No, never. Did never you ever question the pastor? Oh yeah, absolutely. I asked him all the time, why can't people, heal? why don't you heal people? Why don't you do, you know, do the signs and wonders that you're always saying are in the Bible? And if the Bible is absolutely true, then why aren't you following in, you know, in place? Well, so what they respond to? They, they told me that God no longer does miracles anymore, and that was just for the apostles' time. Did you accept that? Absolutely not. I looked for a, another avenue. I wanted to know power. So from mythology, it just kind of gravitated. Would you, would you say it's almost like, well, there's nothing wrong with reading mythology, but it almost opens you up to other powers? Absolutely. And it, and it piques the curiosity, you know, all Satan needs in, in a young person's mind is a wedge. You know, he doesn't have to blast them with any major thing. He just needs a little foothold to, to get in there and start tearing things up. Well, how serious is it that these Harry Potter books are just everyone's, I've got on airplanes, everyone's reading these books now. Uh, how dangerous is that if mythology opens you up to Satanism? How, how about uh, a wizard? Um, it's really interesting. Harry Potter is, I think, one of the most demonic things out there simply because the devil, you know, if the devil showed up in all of his evil glory, then we would obviously know not to follow him. So what he does is he makes things very subtle and, and slowly and slowly you, you get sucked into the darkness, into the void. And that's exactly what Harry Potter does. The first books are kind of cute and childish and then you get darker and darker and darker and darker. Tell me about the time that the devil made a deal with you. Which time was that? Because he's made a lot of deals with me. Well, when you got the, when he told you you could have the power. Oh, yeah. Um, well, I was, like I said, I was at the, the crux of everything. I needed to know what power was. And the, the devil, I don't know if it was the devil himself, but it was a high-ranking principality appeared to me in, in human form and said, if you follow Satan, you'll experience the power that you're looking for. And since, you know, God wasn't doing anything for me and the church wasn't doing anything for me, I agreed. And um, it started out like just so, you know, you know to, not to glorify the devil, but so awesome. I mean, I, had, I, I could read people's minds, I could manipulate them, I could go into their dreams, I could astral project, I could do all the things that, that, that you know that, that the church has been hiding. You know, the church doesn't want to step up to its place. And so the devil gave me a leeway. He was but wait like, a second. You were raised in a church. I was. How in the world could you sell your soul? That's what you did. Yeah. You knew you did it. Why did you? Did, did, were you conned? Did you think maybe you weren't going to sell your soul? Oh, no, I knew. I knew. Just for the power. Just for the power. I needed to experience reality. Reading it in the book was not good enough. Now, you, uh, you became an evangelist for Satan. Uh, who, were, who were the easiest people for you to reach? Um, rejected teenagers, kids between the ages of 12 and 17. You know, they're, they're outcasts and they have purple hair and 45,000 earrings and, you know, they wear all black and their parents don't, don't understand them and their youth pastors don't understand them. So I would just go in and swoop in and just snatch them right up. Now, you actually taught Sunday school in the Baptist church while, while you were in Satanism? Absolutely. Why were you doing that? Because if I did that, I had a leeway into the, into the church itself. 
because the the senior pastor's daughter was in that youth group that and oh, there's all these kids that I could manipulate pull them away from church indoctrinate them into the black arts and then put them back into church as spies now you would heal people but there was a catch <laughs> You, you really did the healing mm -hmm. to control them. Explain that. Well, the way demonic healing works is when, um, if you have a disease, you come to me, and what I do is I take the, the, the demon or the spirit that is attached to you, making you sick, and I pull it off of you because I'm, I have a stronger mm -hmm. demon in me. Now, you're miraculously healed, but what you don't know is it's kind of like a rubber band. As you're walking away, I give it back to you. So now it's like a drug. In order for you to get better, you have to come back to me. So you not only had power, but you had control over that person. Mm -hmm. And that was worth it to you. Yes. I mean, that sounds like a stupid proposition. <laughs> you're, you're, you're risking your whole eternity to have a little power in this little blink of the eye called life? Yeah, absolutely. You're, you're a smart man. But how did you learn how to do these dark things? Did you read books? Did, how, where did it come from? It came straight from the demonic world, and I read books only as references to see what, if I was going in the right direction. I mean, I, did, they, did these demons have control over you? At the end, at the beginning, they let me have, you know, it was the same way that I would heal you. They would, you know, have me a little bit of control, a little bit of control, and then they would pull the rein in. Wait till you find out when Michael switched powers and what he found out about the power he was involved in. Don't go away, we'll be right back. Hello YouTube, Mishpucha. Mishpucha is a Hebrew word, it means family. This is Sid Roth. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. If you've been blessed by this show, please subscribe, then click the bell so you won't miss a single episode of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth, the investigative reporter here with Michael Champagne. And Michael, you were a practicing high priest of Satan. And explain something that a lot of people don't understand. On television today, they have almost, it's called uh, communicating with the dead, uh, uh, talking to uh, seances. Uh, how does this work? How, uh, tell me how this works from your understanding. Well, to be quite honest, about 75% of those people that are doing the seances and TV and the psychics are, are full of baloney. They have no power. It's all gimmicks and, you know, smoke and mirrors, mm -hmm. and they have spies in the audience. But for that, you know, 15 or 20%, they're, they're, they're just connected to demonic powers. And those powers, you know, it's like if, I, if we both have demons. Now, yes, but how can they communicate with the dead? The Bible says you're not supposed to. Right. Well, you're not supposed to, and you can't. But what happens is, if so, if, how do how does someone know? Uh, the, the, like I see on these things, uh, supposedly a dead relative comes back and he says something that no one knows but that dead relative. No one knows but that dead relative and that dead relative's demon, his familiar spirit. That familiar spirit relays the information to the psychic, you know, whoever it may be, and says, "Hey, this is what." You know, he basically takes the shape of the dead relative, takes the identity and says, okay, you know, this is a, what's going on in Mary's house. This is what's going so on in So it isn't really the dead relative. It's the demon that was in the dead relative. Right, right. That's horrible. It, it is horrible. All right, so you, you decided to go to a big church. It's called the Dream Center. Mm -hmm. Why did you go there? Um, to be real honest, I was cold and hungry. I've been, you know, working for Satan on the streets for, like, at least two years. Michael, you're a bright young man. Why would you be working for Satan as cold and hungry? <laughs> because I mean, at that... Don't get a job. <laughs> right. At that point, the demons had control over me because I was far enough into it mm. where if I didn't do what they said, I, I was having horrible night terrors and I couldn't sleep and I... You know, I felt like bugs were caught. I mean, I was literally like in psychosis. So you were con totally controlled. So right. Yeah, you didn't even point. know a lot of things that you were doing. Right. So what did you do when you went in the Dream Center? Um, well, I went into a discipleship program, and I was just going to stay there for two or three days and maybe go back home and try to get my life straightened out. But God had other plans. So what happened was um, my mentor at the time, who became my spiritual father, 
um, said to me one day, he's like, Michael, you can stay here, but you have to get rid of your tarot cards. I had these tarot cards. I've had them for a year or so. I slept with them. I ate with them. It's how I made my living. It's part of my catch to the younger crowd. That was basically my lifeline. And out of nowhere, I just said, okay, let's get rid of them. And um, we went out to the front, and we, took, we tried to burn the cards. We doused them in lighter fluid and charcoal fluid. Nothing happened. Why? The demonic powers wouldn't let them burn that way. Huh. So we had to take them like two at a time and, and douse them and burn them. And see, that was pretty amazing because, you know, flames kill just about anything. But what was really amazing was the flames from these cards were black and purple. And I, I, mean, I, was, I was hearing demonic screaming coming from the side of the cards. Not, you know, like on the cards, but like off to the side. They were almost suffering. Right. There was anger and rage in their screams. Like they couldn't believe that I had broken the, that bond. And then I, um, at that moment, I was just like, r revelation hit me. I was like, well, this is totally stupid, Michael. I'm sitting here and I'm w listening to these things that have been controlling me. And without, you know, I didn't say a sinner's prayer. I didn't do anything like that. I just stomped on the cards as a sign of, my own personal sign of um, redemption. And I turned myself away and I dropped on my knees and the sky split open above me and the yard where I was standing was filled with angels. Had you ever seen angels before? No, I've seen demons, but I've never seen angels. I have to ask you a question. Uh, you understand better than most. Satan does have power, and he's not very happy over you. No. <laughs> aren't you, just between the two of us, aren't you a little afraid? Not at all. Why? Because the power of God is stronger than the power of Satan. You, you wanted power, and that's why, have you found, in other words, I'm told that everything Satan has, he can't create anything, he's just a counterfeit of something real. That's true. Have you found the real thing? I have found the real thing. Is, I mean, is there anything Satan can do to you? Well, you know, he can do stuff to me, but it doesn't really affect me. What do you mean? I mean, even if I, Satan causes a car wreck and I die, where do I go? straight to my father. But I had, I had a realization, because at one point in time, that really bothered me, that he could e even still do that. And then I heard the Holy Spirit say, Michael, you have a mission on this earth, and until I say you're done, I don't care if you get in a car wreck, you're, you're going to walk away. And by the way, you don't want to be here until, you, you, don't, you want to be here until you finish what you do, and once you finish it, why would anyone want to stick around here? <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's true. You know, that's pretty, but you know, you know what I want you to do? I want you to look in the camera right in front of you, and I want you to tell them about the power of Jesus over Satan. The power of God is so much greater than the power of Satan. And I'm, and I'm just, I, I just, right now, there is a coven of witches right now that are praying against this broadcast. And I break the power in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not haunt these people. You will not haunt their kids, their grandkids, their finances. I command it to be broken in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, I ask that you would open the doors of heaven right now on them and let them see your mercy. But Lord, let them see your judgment. Sometimes the fear of God is the greatest, the greatest bringer of life. And I thank you for it, Lord. In Yeshua's name, in Jesus' name, we're going to be right back, and you're going to hear about the real power of God, the power that makes the devil tremble. Did you hear what Michael said? No power can take you out until you've finished God's destiny. That's the power that I represent and that Michael represents and that you're going to be right, right back. Hello, Sid Roth, your investigative reporter here with Michael Champagne. Michael was a practicing high priest of Satan, but now he is a member of the Mishpacha. That's a Hebrew word, the family of God. Now, Michael, I love it when you go after the devil in deliverance. 
you were telling me about you went after one Satanist. Tell me about that. I was um, witnessing in the park, and um, it, this is in Durango, Colorado. It's a major hot spot for witchcraft and idolatry and that type of thing. And my, my philosophy with ministry has been real simple. It's why try to preach the gospel to him for five hours and you can demonstrate it for five minutes. So this guy was, you know, he was smoking pot and he was pretty high. And I walked up to him and I said, so do you believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? And he was like, nah, man, I don't believe in any of that stuff. And I was like, so you don't believe in the devil either? And he's like, no. And he's like, so what happened if I cast the devil out of you? Would you believe that Jesus Christ is Lord then? And he was like, oh, of course. And then I was like, okay. And I looked him dead in his face and I said, every single unclean spirit in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command you to come out. And the, and the kid started trembling and his eyes got real big and he started puking up black goo out of his mouth under the, under the grass. And then when he got done, he looked up and I led him into the sinner's prayer and I prayed for him and got him filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, do you operate? I find that many people that were on the dark side and then surrender to God have very keen gifts of discernment. They know when there are people, there are witches involved or, mm -hmm. or, or uh, people involved in these things. Is that true with you? Yeah, it's very true. And, and, but how about the other? Can you tell if someone's a Christian now? Yeah. How? Um, well, the, you know, I don't want to say that Christianity has degrees, but people that are filled with the Spirit are easier to tell apart than those who haven't been filled with the Spirit. You know, like if it's just like... Do you like, feel something? Do you see something? Um, it, it varies. It varies. People that I can see the Holy Spirit, I can see the anointing on some people. Sometimes I smell the aroma of Christ or I see the fire of God in their eyes. It all depends. Depends on how God wants me to see that person. Prophets I see differently than I see evangelists. What would you say to someone that is reading Harry Potter's books that is like you used to be? Uh, because there are people watching us right now that are exactly the way you used to be. And they don't see the power in church. And they see the power in the demonic, and that's why they're dabbling in all of these things. L look in the camera and talk to that person that is being enticed with Harry Potter, with Boo. Yeah, you know what's going on in <laughs> Hollywood. I mean, what's the agenda with Hollywood these days? What are they trying to Man, accomplish? They're just, they're, they're just bombarding um, the airwaves with demonic suggestions. That's all you need. That's all the devil needs is a suggestion. Now, talk to the person that is thinking about going to the dark side. You're going down the wrong path. You're, you're doomed. You need, you know, Jesus doesn't need you. You need Jesus. You're drowning in an ocean and he's the life raft. He has the power. He has the wisdom. He has everything you need. And look, I pray right now that if you don't change your ways, you're going to see these spirits for who they really are in the next 24 hours. And then you'll know. In Jesus' name. Now, you move in the prophetic uh, very often. Give me an example of some time you moved in the prophetic. <clears throat> um, well, like, like God doesn't like to give me formulas, but I'll just give you some examples. Sometimes uh, when I'm like a... God, if I feel a stirring for healing, I'll sometimes I'll see what's the injured part, whether it be kidneys, ribs, whatever, um, or I'll see a word above that person, or I'll just get um, an impression, like an urging, an unction, and I'll just kind of open my mouth and the words will come out. But one instance that I remember uh, very clear, I was in a, a speaking in a church, a very, very conservative church, Methodist Church, and um, I was just supposed to give my testimony, and I keep hearing the word preach, and I'm like, at this point, I haven't really preached to anybody before, and so the first words out of my mouth were, come Holy Spirit, and the power of God flooded the church, and 15 people got baptized in the Holy Spirit, including the senior pastor, with evidence mm -hmm. of speaking in tongues. Now, tell me about the time you spoke in tongues for the first time. <laughs> Um, well, I had some um, kids that came to the Dream Center from Oral Roberts University, and I, you know, I had just come out of bad spiritual experiences, so I wasn't going to do anything with the Spirit. I don't care. If it had the word Spirit in it, I wasn't involved. And 
they're always sitting in there and they're praying in an unknown language, a tongue. And I was sitting there and we're all holding hands and I started shaking violently. And I thought I was going to get rid of another demon and I was like, oh great. I mean, I, I, was, I felt like fire was like all over my body. And I looked at my mentor at the time and I said, Todd, what's going on? And Todd was like, you're just resisting the Holy Spirit. And he smiled and walked away. <laughs> and I was like, great. This went on for three days where I, I would hold it in and hold it in and hold it in. The last day the kids from ORU were there, we're all in the front yard, we're praying. And I look up and my friend, I, had a, I have a friend named Elliot. He was like, he's a prophet. <clears throat> Six foot five black man staring me in the face. And he's like, God wants you to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Do you accept? And I was like, well, yeah. And he laid his hand on me and the power of God it felt like went from my feet to my mouth and out my mouth like a lightning bolt and I fell on the ground and I started speaking in tongues and in fact I couldn't stop for like three hours. It's all I could do was speak in tongues. Did you see a difference in the power of God uh, after this experience? The day after I started getting dreams and visions and being able to hear the voice of God audibly. What is very quick, what is the difference between the power of God and the power of the devil? Uh, peace. Peace. That, that's the, the main difference. Did you hear that? Shalom, peace, that's the main difference. Do you want peace? You're tired of all the turmoil going on in your life? I speak Shabbat Shalom, the peace of the Sabbath upon you. And I tell you to experience that peace forever. Tell God you're sorry for sin and believe the blood of Jesus washes away your sins. Tell him you're turning from your evil ways and for Jesus to come inside of you and be your Lord and Savior. He said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. Peace I give you, not like the world gives you. I give you my peace. Receive his peace right now. Receive his peace, it's yours, it's yours. I studied everything there was to know about tarot cards, card reading, everything to know about astral projection, Tibetan Book of the Dead, Buddhism, anything there was to know about spirit guides. And what I would do is I would astral project out of the body, enabling spirits to come in, because in witchcraft, I believed that if I could get my own spirit, I, I could be empowered by bringing spirit guides in.